What's up, everybody? My name is Jason, and welcome to Small Biz, your Sunday special edition episode for March the 12th, 2023. In today's very important video, I'm going to talk about how this entire fiasco with Silicon Valley Bank could have been planned or at a minimum allowed to happen in an effort not only to get Joe Biden reelected, but to usher in a whole new system of bank reform and in the process, get the Federal Reserve out of their 2% long-term inflation rate mandate and perhaps most of all, bring an end to this 14-month bear market in the next few weeks. All that and more coming right up. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I need your help. You may have noticed I've been tweeting all morning and night that they're shadow banning anyone who's got a glass half full. And this is going to be the simple glass half full truth of what's about to happen in the stock market. Let me start off by saying that this is not financial advice. And even though I spent half of my career in the last 30 on Wall Street as a broker, been through the 87 experience, at least as a young adult, know exactly what happened in the long-term capital crisis of 98, the dot-com bubble burst to 2000, the Great Recession of 2008 and 9 that sent my ass into bankruptcy court, and of course, the lows of which we made an absolute fortune coming out of the pandemic in March of 2020. Consult your financial advisor. All I ask before you make any moves is to give me the next 15, 20 minutes or whatever it takes to explain why this entire thing, which I am calling a fiasco, could be a setup. Please share this everywhere. Like it. If you're not at least a bit uh, intrigued, you're on the wrong channel. And I don't edit. I've never edited a single video. So I pray to God that I can get this message that's coming through me out to the public to as many people as we can before the markets open on Monday. Simply put, third grade language. Silicon Valley Bank has actually been in existence for 40 years. But in the last four or five, they've seen a massive influx of hot money from Silicon Valley startups, half of which had their money at SIVB. Well, as I said in the last video, you have a situation where you have these young, inexperienced money managers who have never been through a bear market in bonds. And we got addicted to QE for the last 14 years, interest rates near zero for the last 10. And then all of a sudden, the Fed gets it up their AWS that they're going to raise interest rates from zero to almost 5% in record time. So the value of those bonds, whether it's mortgage-backed securities or straight-on T-bills, which are supposed to be about as safe and secure as it gets, have gone down because there's an inverse relationship between the rise of interest rates and the value of those bonds. Well, as the economy has started to struggle and those Silicon Valley startups need access to funds, they started pulling money out. And then you had talking heads like Peter Thiel and others saying, get your money out of not only SIVB, but all the mid-regional money center banks, FRC, First Republic, WAL, it's even affecting Schwab and many, many others that are going to be, quote, in trouble, or are they, in the next few weeks. So when you had to look at their net capital reserves, and again, I'm keeping it simple, stupid, with such a reduction in the value of the mark-to-market of those bonds, combined with a run on the bank of startups that are not only struggling to meet payroll, But to survive, because more than half of them in any market are going to fail within the first five years. So as I and many others have said, follow me on Twitter at TrySmallBiz, this is not like 2008. This is a classic, old school run on the bank. And SIVB, I think intentionally, was allowed to assume above average risk. And stay with me, I'm going to explain why this helps, not hurts Joe Biden in a second. But they failed because there was too much money going out the door as a result of everyone having access to cell phones. This is not the 1950s. And even though they're showing all the Fudster videos of people standing in line, mostly in California, to get cash out of the bank, 
Most people are transferring money out at lightning speed from their cell phone. Welcome to the world of mobile banking. And the second biggest reason why we're about to have a problem initially is that banks have been allowed to make an absolute bloody fortune from what's called the spread for many, many years. In other words, they can go out right now, as many of you can through your broker, and get 4 or 5% in a treasury. Well, at the same time, pay depositors a measly half to more, no more than 1% in most cases in a money market account. And that spread of 3 or 4% is how the banks have made a bloody fortune. JP Morgan, hundreds of millions of dollars of net profit every single week off the spread. So when you have money moving out by way of mobile banking and you have people moving out because they can't make any money because the banks are stealing all the profit from the spread, it's no wonder we have an insolvency problem at the moment. However, and here comes the tinfoil hat conspiracy theory. Rules for radicals, Saul Alinsky. Crooked Hillary Clinton, never let a crisis go to waste. Problem, reaction, solution. What's the problem? We got banks collapsing, starting with a far left woke bank in, in Silicon Valley. More on that in a second as to why they chose SIVB. Reaction, the public's panicking. They're getting money out by way of mobile banking. Some of them are standing in line, which I personally think is a mistake, but you got to do what you got to do. Solution. Government takeover of deposits? Mm, I don't think so. Pushing major amounts of money to the money center banks, most of which are run by liberals like Jamie Dimon at J.P. Morgan? Mm, yeah. Or perhaps most of all to finally usher in banking reform right in front of the transition to the digital dollar so that we're able to not only handle but to actually, believe it or not, thrive in a new world order that's about to unfold. Allow me to explain. There's no way in hell, especially under Joe Biden, one of the most unpopular presidents in history, that they could usher in significant amounts of bank reform without a crisis. You see a lot of people screaming and hollering that the federal deposits are only insured up to a quarter million dollars. It used to be as low as 100 grand. Well, most of you watching me right now don't have anywhere near a quarter of a million dollars. The ones that are screaming, the Mark uh, Cubans, the Anthony Scaramucci's, the Bill Ackman's, who have investments in many of the startups that are not going to be able initially to meet payroll, well, they're screaming and hollering for one, five, ten, even a hundred million I've seen to get insured on their money. Never going to happen. However, problem, reaction, solution. Here comes the guy who can barely stand up straight walking to the helicopter to head to Delaware where he's been on vacation for 40% of his tenure as president of the United States. Mark my words, and if the Fed is smart, they sandbag the majority of their, quote, bailout until Wednesday or Thursday. Let the paper hands get out on Monday. Save the bazooka for later in the week when, mark my words, you're going to see Joe Biden flanked by Jamie Dimon, Jerome Powell, and others not only at the Fed, but in the banking industry, including perhaps, and I hate to say this, even the uh, CEO of SIVB. And by the way, did I just see that the CFO came from Lehman Brothers? You think they would learn, but wait a second, wait a second. Didn't I just say that Joe Biden is one of the most unpopular presidents in the history of my lifetime? And doesn't he want to, quote, finish the job, whether it's against the mean tweeter or the up and commoner uh, who's governor of Florida? What better way to bail Uncle Joe, or as his dad likes to say, Joey out, the mortal enemy of corn pop, the sniffer of young children's hair, the skimmer of 10%, what better way to bail him out than to make a far left woke bank in California the poster child of banking reform? So ladies and gentlemen, Here's my prediction as to what's about to happen, and I will conclude as to why this bear market is about to end and exactly what you should do as an investor and as a trader in the stocks that we currently own. You are going to see in the next few days 
They're going to come out and say all of the deposits at SIVB, a far left woke bank in California, a state that the Democrats do not need. This did not happen in Arkansas or Mississippi for a reason. All those deposits are insured. We're not going to bail out the bank like uh, 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 Janet Yellen said. Unfortunately, if you own stock in SIVB, you might be screwed unless a major bank like J.P. Morgan, Morgan Stanley, etc. step in and take over. As part two of that solution, you're going to see the Fed announce, and don't fight the Fed, they've got more money than you do, announce a backstop into the trillions of dollars. And again, I would wait. I would give the market the bare minimum so don't, we don't have a limit down in the S&P. And right now, Bitcoin's telling us, not even budge. In fact, it's up 600 overnight. Risk is still on. There's nothing to worry about. Now, that could change. They could somehow manipulate the S&P futures down at 3 o'clock in the morning. Anything is possible. But this is a deliberate problem reaction solution, not only to save Joe Biden so he can finish the job, but to usher in a whole new system of bank reform that they otherwise could not do without this crisis. So you'll see the SIVB deposits fully covered. You're already seeing another a number of hedge funds offering up to cover all the payroll from thousands of Silicon Valley startups. And it's also happening in the UK as we speak so that everyone can get the paychecks that they were promised. And while we cannot stop the mobile banking transition or phenomenon that's accelerating the run on these banks, we can pass a law, whether through executive order or Congress, that mandates U.S. banks, regardless of size, must give depositors, like many of you watching, at least half of the spread. No more taking 5% from us and only giving the depositor a half a percent. So if suddenly you wake up, whether it's Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, and you realize, gee, my bank is insured not just to a quarter million, but a million dollars. Well, that's a lot more than 99.7% of the U.S. public has. And now, through Joe Biden, a man who was insanely unpopular a week ago, I'm going to double, triple, or even quadruple as a retiree my returns inside of my money market. And the Fed, who has more money than anybody on this God green earth of ours, whether it's fake or not, is going to backstop all the banks so there's no problem whatsoever in sight other than what the fake news who is being told through the hidden hand to gin up in terms of fear to get the last, quote, paper hands out of the market. Think about what we've been waiting for in the last 14 months of this meltdown. If you're new, welcome. We have managed to generate more than 100 winning trades and almost 700 net percent returns in the last 12 months, trading what most people consider to be reckless penny stocks. I've been trading 30 years. You'll notice I like to get involved with stuff when it's down 90, 95, 99.7% from its 52-week high, as is the case with Hellbiz and XELA. I know what the fuck I'm doing. Wrong button, but you get the point. I have to shadow. I have to ban myself from swearing because they, they cut off my reach. But we've been saying now for the last several months, the only way that this bear market is going to come to an end and stocks can go higher is if the Fed stops raising interest rates. Well, lo and behold, here comes the problem, reaction, and solution that not only triples or quadruples your rate of return by law under Joseph Biernutz Biden within the next 30 days by mandating banks give you a bigger chunk of the spread, but the Fed, who has an awful reputation, many of which watching me right now think they should be shut down and fine. And yes, we are going to have a problem. 10, 15 years from now, when the national debt hits 50 trillion, the interest alone is going to be a trillion dollars and we will have to go through an organized bankruptcy, most likely worldwide. But that's then. This is now. You do not fight the Fed. So I'm telling you guys right now, this bear market that is decimated, shareholders of every kind, 
of every political, racial, sexual persuasion is going to come to an end in the next 30 to 45 days. If they're smart, they let the markets open down and they sandbag the majority of the bazooka for later in the week. And mark my words, by this coming weekend, there shall be no doubt your funds are insured somewhere up to a million dollars. Everyone that's worried about payroll is going to get their money. Your rates of return in terms of your money markets are going to triple, if not quadruple by law. And one of the most unpopular presidents in history and one of the most hated institutions on the planet will suddenly be perceived by at least half of this country as the white knight. Ironically, months before the campaign starts, never forget this and I'm going to drill it in your head until the cows come home in order for the matrix to survive in order for the few to continue to control the many not only in this country but around the world they cannot afford to allow the entire system to collapse scare you yeah jolt you out of your pot induced video game a uh, game coma yes but the hunger games a total collapse of the system where there's a run on every single bank in this country? I don't think so. This, in my opinion, and I have been right far more than wrong, has been allowed to fester. Don't tell me that the Fed, who has more PhDs, I believe, on staff than any other government institution in history, don't tell me that they didn't know or even allow SIVB to take on excessive amounts of risk, knowing that when you go from zero to 5% in such a short period of time, that there was going to be credit risk or duration risk, because as the value of mortgage-backed securities or T-bills alone go down as we raise the rates, that's bound to create a credit crunch and a potential run on the bank. But they're only going to let this go so far. And the reason why, in closing, before I get to our stocks, the reason why it's a woke bank in California is because it wouldn't be nearly as acceptable if it was Mississippi, West Virginia, or Arkansas. The big guy, the skimmer of 10%, arguably the most corrupt president of any of our lifetimes, is about to be made out as a national hero because you may have seen the fake news is running a story nonstop that Donald Trump signed an ex executive order in 2018 basically deregulating banks like SIVB to create this fiasco in the first place. So mark my words, CNN, MSNBC, and everyone else, perhaps even Fox, who Rupert Murdoch is on record as not wanting the mean tweeter, they're going to make him out as the villain and, villain and Joe Biden the savior. He's going to save the retirees, not only with Obamacare and Medicaid and Social Security we made, made whole and safe and secure, but your deposits, the money that you make, ladies and gentlemen, at your local regional outlet is about to be three or four times by law or executive order. And the Federal Reserve, who has at the moment anyway a lousy reputation, is about to become the white knight. The deep pockets that puts an end to the fiasco, to the chaos, to the fear. And then we're going to wake up, whether it's next week, next month, but at some point, in my opinion, before Memorial Day, and realize the Fed is not only putting the brakes on the rate hikes, but they're going to allow inflation to run slightly hotter for the next 12 to 18 months, or are they actually laying the groundwork to get out of the 2% mandate and get into something a little more comfortable at 25 or 3%? And what better way to say, hey, in order for us to save you, in order for us to bail out the banks, in order for us to help meet payroll, in order for us to help Joe Biden get four more years to finish the job, we have to let inflation run a little bit hot. But as you saw in the most recent report, unemployment's ticking up and it's really going to go up for some of the Silicon Valley startups. Wage inflation's coming down. And once we get through the next 30 to 60 days and the supply chain issues and everything else is resolved 
and you can lay your head down to sleep at night knowing that your money is safe and you've got a much higher rate of return, which means you do not have to move your money by way of your cell phone out of your regional bank. What's going to happen to the stock market? What's going to happen to all those people that panic on Monday if they allow this market to open down and they should and they blow out of HLBZ at a dime or XELA under a nickel. They're going to wake up at some point before Memorial Day and realize, holy shit, Helen. We panicked. We got sucked into the fake news FUD. We didn't listen to Jason. We made fun of the fact that he thought it was all about getting Joe Biden reelected, getting the Fed out of a pickle, getting them to a position where they could actually use 3%, not 2 as their inflation rate, which means what? They can continue to print money for as far and as long as the eye could see so that the hidden hand or the matrix can get exactly what they want from you and me. So what do you do if you're an investor? And I realize this is long, folks, but please do me a favor. Share this, like it, watch it 15 times. If you're a long-term investor, you're licking your chops. You've heard me say, marry your mutual funds, date your stocks. All you need is simple index funds tied to the NASDAQ 100, the IWM, the QQQ, the SPY, the DIA. Take your pick. Marry it. Dollar cost average. You, if you're a long-term investor, and we've had three bear markets in the last six years, so the odds of the next five years being very good are strong. You're licking your chops. You're having a meeting tonight. You're saying, Helen, we now put $100 into our IRA, our 401k by way of index funds that we own through Fidelity, T. Rowe Price, etc." Can we afford to put two or even 300 a month? Can we scrap cable? Can we cut back on the local gym? Can we stop going out to those four-star and five-star restaurants and those fancy hotels on vacation? Can we afford to stay at the Holiday Inn? Or are we willing to make a sacrifice? Because Jason and several others that they're allowing the message to get out is saying that this too shall pass. We have had 40 bear markets plus since 1900. Average drawdown, 37%. And every single was followed by new all-time highs. So you are planning right now, if we get a 5 to 10% implosion over the next month, to load up, to put in as much as you can. And if you do it at once... Make sure if it's a mutual fund, it's at the closing price, right? So if we're down 2,000 points on Monday, and I don't expect us to be, you're putting money in tomorrow because you're going to get the closing price at 4 p.m. You want to be adding in the midst of the free fall on a very down day if we get one at all. So what do you do if you're a trader like us? And again, in case you didn't hear me or you're not following me on Twitter at Try Small Biz, we've racked up over 100 winners. At 1.6 months ago, we were up 16x on our money. I've been trading markets 30 years. I was a broker for 15. I know, and I'm going to let this one slide, I know what the fuck I'm doing. This is not tinfoil hat conspiracy theory. I understand problem, solution, reaction. I understand the matrix needs us enslaved, scared, but enslaved in order for the system to continue on or to adapt to what's about to happen when they introduce the digital dollar, which I'll talk about in another video. The stock market is going much higher in the next few years. The bear market is coming to an end in the next 30 to 45 days. The stocks that we own, I am going to, and this is what I'm personally doing. I'm adding 10% liquidity. I already did it on Thursday. It'll be uh, ready to go Monday morning. We take the 52-week lows. Hell biz around 11 cents. XELA 046 and across the board, we are in most cases 10 to 15 percent above recent 52 week lows that were set two or three weeks ago. You create staggered buy limits. So you put orders in on Hellbiz at 12, 11 and a half, 11, etc. And tip of the day, I like to sit slightly above whole numbers. So 0.1201 or 
one one five one because there's a lot of limits to buy and sell at round numbers. And then on XCLA, you put an order in at 0.0501, etc. So if they open up and then tank, or they tank us and then run us, we get filled on some or all of whatever liquidity you have left, staying in, staying within the 10 to 15% limit. But if nothing happens, if crypto is telling us the truth once again with Bitcoin up 600 and steady as a rock, and we don't get the crash, or if we do, it's muted, and the public begins to realize that their money is safe, they're insured up to a million or whatever the number happens to be, that payroll is covered and that the Fed is coming to an end and they're willing to let inflation run slightly higher than expected because that's where they really want to be long term because that allows them to keep cranking out the dollars when the hidden hand deems it necessary then we're going to look back on this moment and realize that I was right once again. So ladies and gentlemen, please like, share, and comment below. And always remember that I love you guys. And thank you so much for watching.